Hi, uh, welcome to this video. Um, this is another video in the series about KNX programming. And in this one, it's going to be a pretty short video about what is blocking. Um, so blocking is one of the things that you can do which will make your system um, seem more intelligent. And it'll certainly make your system seem more intelligent to your wife anyway. But I'll come on to that in a moment. So what is blocking? Well, blocking is what you need to employ when you have this kind of situation. So let's say we have a, a room like this where we have a light bulb in the room and we have a switch on the wall and we also have a, a movement center. Now, if we typically set this up where we have the actuator for the light um, just feeding off one uh, group address, in this case, one slash one slash one, and we can switch that on with the light switch. And if this address gets a, a 1 then the actuator will come on the light will come on if this gets a 0 then the, uh, to this address then the light switch will go off similarly if movement is um, censored in the room it will send a 1 to this and then at the end of a sort of predefined time which you can you know you can program into this object into this into this um, uh, movement sensor um, maybe two minutes or so for example uh, it will send um, automatically it will send an off um, switch, uh, an on off message to this group address. And this is because you have this kind of timer in here. And what this means is, you know, if you set it up things like this, which is kind of what you would imagine, you know, initially um, you know, when you're programming uh, your ETS, you would, you would just think, oh yeah, I'll quickly connect this in here. But what this leads to is an angry wife, because they might go into the garage and they'll be doing something like lying on the floor or something like that. Um, you know, it's obviously important. And they'll have the light on. And of course, the movement sensor timer will go off and the light will go off. And then suddenly you're left uh, in the dark and they get very angry when that happens. So what do you do to resolve this issue? It's pretty straightforward. Basically, you have uh, two group addresses that the actuator listens to. You have the original light switch group address, and then you have another group address, which is for m the movement uh, group address. And so your light switch is, is as, as was. That just switches on and off this actuator, ones and zeros when you switch this on, or a zero when you switch it off. And similarly with the movement sensor, you plug this in uh, to a group address that will give you a one when there's movement, and then at the end of the timer, it'll send a zero. And the actuator will listen to both of these. But what, the, what you do do is you also make the blocking channel on the presence uh, or, or movement um, object uh, listen to this light switch group address uh, as well. So when you click the switch, the, the on um, message goes to both the light bulb, but it's also been listened to on the blocking channel uh, by the, uh, the the movement sensor, and it will start the blocking uh, process and that will mean that the no timer will run and then you won't get this kind of automatic uh, zero sent to the um, uh, uh, to, to the light switch which will cause you all sorts of strife so I'll just show you what that looks like on my ETS so we'll have a look here in the garage where I've got this set up and we've got a um, push button and we can see that the push button uh, in this case, if I look at this one, it's the top rocker. This is the light switch. So it's a uh, group address in my case to switch the garage light to 0 slash 1, 10. Uh, and that will just send a, an on and an off when that light switch is switched. I've also got a presence indicator. And in this, there's two uh, channels, or three channels, but two channels that are functioning. There's a switch object. And this is the one that um, the when presence is noted by the uh, this presence um, monitor, it will send a one uh, to this address, so zero one twelve, and and then when the timer runs out, uh, and you can set the timer in here if you look in the parameters somewhere. Yeah, so I've got the timer running out after two minutes. Um, you can uh, you know it will send a zero to this address and it'll switch the lights off, but. Also, it's listening, so looking at the locking object or the blocking objects, it's, the nomenclature is slightly different depending on the, the, um, uh, the, the, the manufacturer. Um, this locking object channel is listening to that switch. So when this, this 
push button switch is switched on. This listens to that and it will initiate uh, locking and therefore no timer will run until you actually turn this back off again. And, and that's it. Um, it's pretty easy. I'll show you how the uh, what the actuator looks like. Um, so if I can remember where, which one it is. Let me find it. Um, here, so where are my actuators? It's one of the lighting actuators. I'll have to do a quick search for the group address. I find the oh, I always get this wrong. Um, workplace group addresses. And what did we say it was? It was ground floor, garage, PIR. We can have it. There we go. So it's uh, RMG AT. Let's go and find that. Oops. Sorry about that. Find that uh, here's the actuators in the garage lighting actuators on GAT and I think what channel was it uh, it is channel one so if we look at the switching object so this is listening to all of these things it's listening to garage all lights garage lights switch garage lights PIR and then all lights um, uh, so you can see it's listening to all of these uh, potential group addresses and they can all switch it uh, uh, on or off and, and that's it. That's how you set up blocking. So, uh, yeah, happy blocking. Thanks for listening.